Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to Wisdom from North, the Nordic platform for accelerated inner growth and empowerment. I'm Janneke, and today I'm excited to be here with Pam McDonald. Pam is a light worker, a gifted empath, and she's a Reiki and a tapping teacher. And she's utilizing tapping in her work with her clients to help them release energy blocks. Now, she's also one of our masterclass teachers in Wisdom from North membership, where she is teaching the class tapping, change your mind, change your life. And you can learn all about the class and the membership in the link below. Today, we're going to dive into tapping tapping. So let's meet Pam. Hello, Pam. How are you? And a warm welcome. Uh, hi, Janneke. I'm fine. And thank you for having me here. I'm very excited about diving into tapping because it's a topic that I haven't really addressed on the YouTube channel and also in my membership. And actually in 2012, when I started my YouTube channel, uh, one of my first Norwegian interviews was about tapping with this guy. And then seven years have passed and I forgot about <laughs> tapping and then you appear uh, and sort of tapping came into my life again. And I'm excited to dive into it because it's a really powerful technique and it's also called EFT. So for everybody who are new to tapping, let's start there. What okay. is it? Okay, so um, let me start with EFT. You, you will hear me say EFT or tapping. I, I use them interchangeably, but EFT is actually stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. It is the clinical version of tapping that I trained in. So tapping in and of itself um, kind of comes from a history of or a background of Chinese medicine, ancient Chinese medicine, um, and the technique of acupressure, not acupuncture, because acupuncture actually is needles that are um, inserted into the meridians, and acupressure is merely just um, holding pressure on the different meridians. So, Tapping is kind of modeled after that. It, it's come through uh, a number of things. Ke kinesiology kind of started first and then um, several different versions of it. And then something called thought field therapy and then EMDR, um, which is eye movement. Um, energy psychology, you might hear that as well. And then um, finally, a gentleman by the name of Gary Craig actually took the thought field therapy. That's sometimes hard for me to say. <laughs> and um, developed this EFT format or tapping format. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a history of of tapping and then actually what tapping does is it allows us to acknowledge mm, different thoughts beliefs feelings emotions that um, come up for us that may give us a trigger or a charge it allows us to acknowledge those tap on them and actually release them um, out of our body because what happens is when we have life experiences traumas or just unpleasant you know things that happen to us our body remembers every single life event and if we aren't able to release that in a timely manner that energy can get stuck in our body and it can then manifest into pain, um, multiple different kinds of diseases, issues like, well, you know, cancer, diabetes, um, 
It can be really just anything. However, the body decides, decides might not be a, the best word, but however, the body ends up manifesting it. Okay. So what tapping does is help us kind of hone in on some of those things, release that energy, and then gives the body, it gives the mind time to, um, or, or the brain time to rewire and reset, and the body to come back into healing. Interesting. And for those who are totally new to it, when we mean tapping, we actually mean tapping. Yes, there, there are um, about nine areas on the body that we tap. I'll go through those in the master class. You know, I have that. And um, actually, I think one of the takeaways is a form that sh shows where those are. But yes, we will tap on certain, um, certain parts of the body. And what is it that it does? Is it the, my focus uh, on the issue? I, I'm just curious about the signals I'm sending to my system when I'm tapping and thinking about, okay, so I'm afraid of meeting this person again. I'm, I'm just making something up and I'm tapping on it. What is actually happening? Okay, so as you are acknowledging, recognizing, um, thinking of that thought pattern, right? As you're going through that thought pattern, by tapping, what you're actually doing is interrupting that thought pattern. Okay. So when all you do is just think about it, your pattern just goes right along. When you, when the pattern is going along and you're tapping, you're disrupting it, right? And as you disrupt it, and we, do, and we don't really just focus totally on what's wrong. You know, we do talk about what's good and where we want to be. So we do replace those things and, and come back to the good or where we want to be. Now, um, a little bit about that is as we, um, pe people ask a lot of times, well, why do I even want to remember all those horrible things? Well, it's sort of like having an injury. If all you do is just, con you never wash it, right? Let's say you get a really bad cut. You never wash it. You never clean it. You just slap a Band-Aid on it. And then you take that Band-Aid off. You've still got a sore, right? But if you clean it properly, you address it with some sort of antibiotic, whatever, you put that Band-Aid on it. You give it a few days, you take the Band-Aid off, it's healing. Well, the same thing happens with this energy in our body. We've got to recognize it. We've got to acknowledge it. We've got to talk about it. And then we want to decide how we want it to be different. And once we do that, the brain can then, again, rewire, reset, and the body then has its full flow of energy. And that's where we talk about the chakras and the meridians and how the energy of the body flows. And I know a lot of your folks have studied energy. So I think that they're probably very familiar with that, or at least some familiar with it. And, um, so anyway, that flow of energy in our body then ha allows our body to heal. Fascinating. Um, so tapping, can it work on big issues that we struggle with? And also right in the moment, let's say I'm feeling anxiety uh, or frightful all of a sudden or um, nervous before I'm going to perform. Yes, it can. So what I call that is I call soothing in the moment. So if you are in one of those uh, particular events, life events, you just 
stop for a few moments. If you need to excuse yourself and go to the restroom, you know, go in there if you don't want anybody seeing you tapping or just, you know, gently (laughs) or, you know, (laughs) whatever. Um, You can do that as well. But yeah, you can, you can soothe in that moment of anxiety or fear or whatever it might be. Or you can do that deep, deep work, what I call the deep, deep work, where you nurture for a lifetime. And that is those big issues. Um, and, and, And those sometimes are really hard things for people to um, acknowledge because a lot of things happen to some of us in our childhood that we choose to forget, but that stays with you and that has your energy blocked. So until you decide that you hurt and, or you're angry or you're fearful enough more then you don't want to talk about it and release it. You know, you're just going to stay stuck. But if you can come to a point where you can actually talk about it, let it go, release it. It's not that the memories aren't going to be there because they will be. We're human. We're going to remember. But you don't have to be triggered by it. And, And that's what happens with most of our uh, fear, our anxiety, and those kinds of things. It's it's being triggered by something, some event in our lifetime that has happened and is now stuck in our body somewhere. Do you think we need to go through layer after layer after layer when it comes to a big issue? Because there seems so, uh, to be always with something we're really struggling with in life, that there's so many layers of it. Uh, or can a tapping session sort of take the root out of it fairly quickly? I, I guess it depends. It depends. It'll depend on the person. It'll depend on the energy of that person. It will depend on what their body is willing to give up at the time or not. So can big issues be resolved quickly? Yes. Um, sometimes you can tap. And it may take some days for everything really to settle out. It's, um, it's really no different than many other modalities or techniques, you know, medical or traditional, it, it, traditional or alternative, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it just takes a little longer for things to, um, you know, reside or kind of fall away. And then there are some times when things just leave. I've and, heard. Hmm? No, I was just going to say, and a unique thing about, about tapping as well is as you tap certain things, other things will just automatically fall away. You can tap on one thing and other things will fall away. I've, I've heard incredible stories uh, from actually spiritual teachers uh, that I follow, like Gabrielle Bernstein and other people, who've actually said that like tapping changed their life completely. And that fascinates me because we have so many healing modalities, uh, but tapping seems to be for some just the thing that made the whole different difference. And I think it's, you know, different from people to people that something works for some and something works for others. Uh, I haven't uh, used tapping that much, but would you say it's, it's a unique um, healing technique? Uh, has it really changed your life? I would say it is a unique healing technique. It's, it's a very powerful self-help tool. You can take it anywhere you go. Once you learn it, it's yours. You can take it. Um, you, can, you can literally tap on anything. Now, had I have known that, my first day of tapping training might have looked a little differently than what I'm going to share. But you were, you were talking about how, you know, how does it change your life? How did it change mine? Well, when I went, I'm always learning things. So 
I'm never afraid to learn stuff. But I walked into this first day of tapping class, first session, sat down in my seat. I found a, a chair that was, you know, kind of by itself. And I just kind of kind of settled into it in my own little space. And when the instructor got up, she wanted us all, I was in the, like the second row back from the front. And she wanted us to stand up, tell who we were, where we were from, why we were there. And um, when it came my turn, I was like the fourth one. When it came my turn, I stood up. I was literally shaking inside and out. When I spoke, my voice was barely audible because it was so shaky. And all I could get out at that moment was the energy in this room is overwhelming. And I really almost started to cry. I, I was tearful. And everybody in the room was just like, it's okay, Pam, we got you. We understand you're going to be okay. And then it was just like this flood of energy came to me, you know, this love and understanding. And um, for me, literally, that was the moment that my life changed. When I look back on it, that's the moment when my life changed. Throughout that whole weekend, I, I realized that I was understood that they supported me, they understood me, they encouraged me to step into my gifts of in, intuitive and uh, of being an intuit, intuitive and empath. Um, they helped me understand that, you know, I'm a light worker and a healer, and I didn't have to be ashamed of those things or afraid of them either, that I just needed to step into those skills and those gifts. And later, as, of course, I learned tapping and I, I learned to tap on different things in different ways, that's just, that's really just changed everything for me. Um, I live in Oklahoma, so in the USA, and that's kind of called the Bible Belt um, of America. So here, religion is a very big thing. Uh, Christianity is a very big thing. And, you know, I was born into that and raised that way. So I still feel like I have to be a little careful of really sharing all my gifts with, with uh, my very close friends and family because not all of them are kind of into um, that more spiritual rather than religious part. So um, I have to be careful about how much woo-woo I share with them. But um, tapping has helped me kind of through all of that. Um, whenever I have a pain or I have, um, I think you're going to see in the master class, I use that as an example as well uh, of tapping for myself. And um, yeah, you know, it's really nice. Have my way through things. <laughs> it's really nice in the master class that you're using yourself as an example. Like, I, you know, I'm excited but a bit afraid of doing this master class, and it sh it's just showed. I, I think it was so vulnerable and beautiful at the same time because we're we're very often a bit afraid when we're going to be visible, right? We all are. And it was just so beautiful that you took that as an example so we can relate to you as a teacher because often we put pe uh, teachers a bit on the pedestal and when you level with people like, this is my thing, you know, right now I'm experiencing this, that's when we can relate. And that's why I, I love teachers like that, like you who are really humble and honest with, with who they are. Um, yeah, because we're, we're all in this together. Too. Yeah, we're just people too. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I know you and I have talked about chameleon and playing small to stay safe. And I don't remember if I've mentioned that already, but um, that's what I was. I grew up my whole life uh, being what I call that chameleon. Um, doing and being for everybody else what I thought they needed me to be, do, or say. 
So I never really knew who Pam McDonald was. And, you know, I was already, I was always Mac and Dorothy's daughter or Rod's little sister or somebody else's cousin or, you know. <laughs> so it took me most of my life, um, actually, probably that tapping class. Um, well, that was a big step. It was, my journey started before then, but um, yeah, I, I have really learned to step out of that chameleon role. Do I go back to it? I do. But the difference now is that I choose to use that chameleon role when it's necessary or it suits me. Hmm. Not, not for, um, not for any, you know, negative means, but just sometimes you have to step into that. You have to step into a different role, but I only do that when I choose to and because it suits the betterment for all, if that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. I think it's all about that, making conscious choices. Sometimes uh, I think it's okay to go into victim. Like now I just need to pity myself. Uh, now I need to feel that it hurts or, uh, well, I'm not talking about that self-love, but more like actually going into the victim energy because in the spiritual community, we speak a lot about, oh, don't go into a um, victim, you know, become a victim. But if you do it consciously, sometimes we need to feel like that, but it's okay when we consciously choose it. But when we're unconscious about where we're going, that's when we're sort of not in our power. That's what I believe. And and you kind of made a distinction there because we don't have to become the victim, but we can choose to feel that if that serves our purpose at the time. Right, right. And here's the good thing. When you feel like you need to be that victim, you can tap on it and maybe you don't have to go there. <laughs> I love how you can use tapping for everything. Like I, literally everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very inspired to do it again. Uh, so you said how many points were there? Topping points? There's about nine. Um, I'll just run through them quickly with you. There is what we call the karate chop point. And then you're going to have the eyebrow, the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, on the chin, on the collarbone and under the arm. And I don't know if you can see that, but for the ladies, it's about where your bra strap is, but it's about four inches underneath the, the crease of your arm down. And then uh, the crown or top of the head. Yeah. So those are the major ones. Now um, you can also tap on the fingertips. You can also tap in between the small finger and the ring finger for different things. Um, what I'm going to be teaching in the master class is kind of what we call the simple basic um, technique because that's what most of us use. But in, um, in instances of trauma, or PTSD, or some things like that, where those energies um, can really be stuck, and those memories can really be um, devastating, if you will. We sometimes have to use a couple of other different methods of tapping to kind of help resolve those. Hmm. So there's a there's also a technique where we use a little bit of eye movement and um, that kind of thing, but again, those usually just using this basic recipe that I'm what we call the basic recipe that I'm going to give in the master class will pretty much touch everything. Does it work even though you're skeptical? Let's say you're tapping, you're doing everything, you, you you're teaching us in the membership or you know tapping in general and you don't believe it it's like i don't believe this it, it, it doesn't help like how can i tap away a big issue or how, how can yeah. i tap away this feeling that's always coming back 
So what I tell people is, <clears throat> let's talk about massage and tapping, okay? In something like massage, you feel somebody's hands on your body. You can feel them moving the tissue, whatever. In tapping, yes, you feel your own hands tapping on your body, but it's too, um, it's moving energy in two different ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in tapping, yes, you can be, um, you can be skeptical. And, and I kind of have two mindsets on that. There's a part of me that believes if somebody is going to be so obstinate and headstrong that they're just going to shut it out, there's nothing going to help them. I don't care what it is. Nothing will help them. However, that other part of me says, I really don't care how headstrong you are. It's going to release something. If you really do it, it will release. Something is going to release. Now, you might not acknowledge it. You might not recognize it. But there will be things that, that are released. You know, I just got an interesting thought because let's say you're tapping and you set the intention of releasing something, but mm -hmm. you don't believe it will happen. What is the strongest? Is it the intention or is it the belief? For me, it's the intention. I believe if you have the intention and you give it your best shot, things will happen. Now, you know, we always have these disclaimers of um, this or that or something else. Well, you know, EFT is probably not going to fix your broken bone. Right. Things like that. But it can address a whole plethora of issues. So don't negate, even if you have that broken bone, even if you have that cancer, even if you have that diabetes, tap on what, tap on what you need to tap. And really, I can almost guarantee you that those things will, if nothing else, lessen. Mm -hmm. Be less aggravating for you and is it something you need to do every day or often depends on you and what you're working with I mean you know there are days I go that I don't necessarily need to tap but there's other days that I need to tap pretty much all day long <laughs> is it like you have a regular practice like we often have a regular meditation practice, like wake up in the morning and I meditate. Do you have a practice like wake up in the morning and I, I tap? Um, I'd like to say that I'm one of those people who does something on a regular basis, but I don't. Um, every day, kind of, I wake up maybe in a new world and I do different things. Um, what one of the things I probably do more on a regular basis than anything else is something like that fourth bumps. Oh yeah. That routine yeah. you talk about. Oh, in yeah. Class. yeah. 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 And um, I think we go through that in the master class. So that is one thing that gets the energy moving or calmed depending on what it needs to be. Um, but really no. I can't say I'm a regular at and any you of the know, things. You know, what I've just started waking up to is that it's good with routine and discipline and all of this. However, there is always another perspective. And we're really taught in our culture to have this structured, discipline, linear thinking. And that's a very masculine approach. Well, the feminine is more like uh, embracing, uh, cyclical, uh, feeling into the moment. What do I need right now? 
And we're not used to think that because we're used to hearing, you have to meditate every day. Sit like this. <sighs> um. And a lot of my members are saying, I can't sit like this. And because we're not all made to sit like that. Discipline our minds. Like women, often we need to move a lot and do med meditation in, um, in nature instead. There's so many ways to meditate. And I think we need to loosen up a bit uh, on the what we need to do in our spiritual practices, that there are many approaches. There are many ways of doing this. And you have the masculine approach, but also the feminine approach, which is more sort of... Uh, not so disciplined in a sense, more creative. <laughs> and I guess it, it, if I had to say I have anything that I do pretty much on a regular basis, once upon a time when my eyes opened, I was out of that bed at a, you know, once my eyes opened, I was out and going and doing. And um, I don't do that so much anymore. I, when I wake up, I take the time to kind of, um, so I, I, you know, it's not really a meditation or anything, but I take the time to really wake up, to really feel into my body, to really kind of feel the day, think about the day, think about what's going to go on in my day. And um, I do that before I ever even get up. So, no, that's not a meditation, and no, it's not tapping, but it is something that I do almost every day. Mm. So, in a way, I guess that's kind of a practice that I do, but um, I guess it was, it, it isn't really intentional. It's just sort of, um, that's just what I've come to do. I so, I don't know, maybe it is intentional. <laughs> I think that um, oh, we, we change practices uh, after where we are uh, in our life and what we need. Uh, what has stuck with me uh, like a practice is waking up in the morning and think about my dreams. So I close mm -hmm. my eyes and I catch my dream. It's just a, a habit I have because I remember my dreams very well. It seems to be one of my, you know, strong sort of senses uh, so I close my eyes and I go back to the dream and then I catch it and then I let that sort of uh, color my day or I think about it and I reflect upon it. So because right after you wake up, it's a very uh, good yeah, time. You're, to, yeah, <laughs> you're kind of in that. You're kind of in between, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love that state. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much, Pam. This was truly interesting. And I'm excited about everybody who's going to also get the chance to see the class. And I just want to say that the membership is open right now. Uh, if you're watching this in spring 2021, and the link is below, you can read all about the masterclass and the membership uh, in Wisdom from North in general. And I just want to say thank you so much, Pam, and all the best with your work. I know you're doing beautiful work with your clients and have so much going on. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I really enjoyed being here. Thank you for watching, everybody. Much light from the U.S. and Norway. Bye-bye.